As far as human beings, we all have a range of emotions. Okay, it's not about normal, abnormal, etc. In certain situations, we have certain responses from the nervous system, and that's an emotional response. So, for example, when I need change in my life, there'll be anger. When I want to change something specific in my life, there'll be anger. In the same way, when I look at something that could be potentially dangerous, I experience fear. Mm-hmm. And that same thing, when it becomes an situation that's not real in the sense that i've imagined it so for example a child who's exam a uh, failed in an exam will experience fear the next time but a child who's seen a child who's performed badly and failed but thinks that he or she could also fail experiences anxiety there's a difference you get what i'm saying so when i say anxiety it's a more generalized response to something that i perceive as dangerous whereas fear is something that is real it's there and i need to have a specific response like if there was a snake here i need to run or i need to do something because i am not sure how the snake is going to react to me mm. right and i'm not trained to catch the snake or to calm the snake or anything so i have to have a response there mm-hmm. right so this is the difference and most uh, unfortunate thing that happens is a lot of people blogging and blogging and all that tend to use this interchangeably fear and anxiety are put together as one category but they are very different even physiologically and also at the more, most important level in terms of why they come and what needs to be done okay so children do feel anxious and they experience it and express it differently so for any emotion any emotion has a physiological component which means your body will change right in response to fear you'll see like a you'll feel like an increased heart rate you're going to sweat you're going to have clammy hands you're going to want to run you know all those things but when you have anger for that matter the raised heart rate will be there but you're ready to throw a punch you're like who the hell are you to tell me how to do this so that's going to happen so for children anxiety can take a range first will be the anger related symptoms because you know most children are told don't be scared you're supposed to be courageous so you know what they'll do is they'll say okay but anger is allowed in my family so let me allow anger mm. so the child is going to have a tantrum or the child is going to you know uh, be irritable easily frustrated so those kind of things the second set of symptoms are where you will find the child becoming sad my mother doesn't love me you know nobody likes me amma tell me that you love me those kind of symptoms will come in the third will be the control issues the child starts controlling the adult if i do this then i don't feel anxious so that could be through perfect some sometimes that could be by uh, you know telling the mother if you love me do this for me so you will see a lot of children becoming very controlling in the classroom and you will see even in classrooms children uh, not submitting notes and stuff like that because then the teacher is in a less powerful position and the child is able to say okay now i'm in control she is asking me when are you submitting when are you submitting kind of thing so you get what i'm saying so that's the control related things then you have the more um, common which is the focus related so the child is unable to focus in class comes across as very fidgety um, restless cannot sit down and unfortunately because a lot of mental health professionals do not spend time looking at this and trying to understand this they get medicated for hyperactivity when they are actually anxious Okay. You get what I'm saying? It's a very sad state because every child is now, you know, the mother says he's fidgety, he's not sitting. So then they say, oh, it must be hyperactivity because there are a lot of scales for hyperactivity. But it could just be very simple anxiety-related uh, uh, responses which need to be dealt with by teaching children self-soothing and self-regulation. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then you have the disruptive behaviors where the child starts, you know, breaking things, becoming violent because you know I'm feeling so restless inside me. and the easiest way to gain the sense of uh, calm is by being disruptive hitting somebody else or uh, uh, pinching somebody else you know those kind of things and it's very very common in the younger age groups you see the preschool uh, child who's always hitting other children and things like that because you know he or she is not made sense of his own emotion or her own emotion and therefore it comes out like that 
Then the um, one that you know you see more often in uh, uh, in an everyday interaction is the somatic complaints, as we call them, stomach pain. Child woke up with stomach pain. He's always having headaches, things like that. And you know, in the uh, the mother will typically tell you, "Ma'am, it doesn't happen on days he doesn't have school." Okay, on the days he has school, he wakes up with the stomach ache. And you know that it also becomes nausea. So you try to feed the child something, he or she is vomiting. Those kind of symptoms sort of step in. So this would be overall how children experience anxiety. So I think I've sort of covered a lot. Of course, when we take it technically as psychologists, we go into each of these and look at it uh, differently. But these would be by and large how children, uh, uh, how parents can look at anxiety. Because you know the difference between other emotions and anxiety, anger will be provoked at some point. Mm -hmm. like, for example, somebody irritates me and I get angry. But anxiety, you can wake up with anxiety. Correct. Right? Which is why it becomes a little more tricky because a parent is saying, but he went to sleep well. Mm. Why is he waking up with a stomach pain? So immediately you associate it with something physical and it gets missed. So from the mental health space, I would say be a little more in tune with your child to see, could this be something that's more emotional mm. than something that's physical? So I hope that sort of gives you a context of what uh, anxiety can be in children. Definitely, definitely. So uh, as you said, like uh, uh, there are ways to support them, right? Like self-soothing techniques or something like that. Can you brief us more about it? Like how do we help them? See, now the thing is before I go into how we soothe children, we need to also understand how we contribute towards it. Oh, correct. Right? Before I go into the solution, I need to know what I'm doing to sustain it correct. or what I'm doing to create it. So the first thing that I would always look at is if you're an anxious parent yourself, mm -hmm. if anxiety is your go-to response for everything, then it's likely that your child is modeling that and picking that up. Okay. Right? So if every time something happens, I'm like, oh God, what happened? You know, will this be all right? You know, or immediately try to cons consult with an astrologer, do this, do that. I'm not taking away any belief system. What okay. I'm trying to say is you're always reacting Mm. to a perceived threat in such a complex manner, then that's really the issue. Right? Mm -hmm. So uh, if you are an anxious person, you're likely to have a child who's also picking up anxiety. The other thing is the very competitive parent, no? who's always pushing the child to do this and do that and you know, uh, keeping up with everybody else and you know, my child shouldn't miss out. They are the ones that contribute to a lot of anxiety because the child is always in performance mode. Mm. There's no downtime. The child is not having any time to just regulate and gently enjoy emotions, right? And if you look at it, at any point, you can feel anxious, mm. right? Now, if I hear a sound outside my window, the first response will be anxiety. If I don't know what it is, the first thing will be, oh my God, what is happening outside? And then it will probably become fear if it's specific. Correct. And, you know, it will move away to another emotion if it's not specific, mm. right? So, and this is a very important response for my body. To say that you should never feel fear is probably the biggest myth, right? You have every right to feel every emotion, but you should know how to regulate it. So when I come back to parental patterns, also when you're an extremely perfectionistic parent, perfection itself comes from anxiety. When I'm scared to be shamed, when I'm scared to be shamed, I start becoming so perfect that you will love me so much for it. You can never find any fault in me, but that's coming from anxiety. Mm. Right? So that would be also, you know, another way or another way in which children experience control or express control by being perfectionistic. I'm that perfect child in your classroom. I'm that child who's always coming first. And the teachers are always in love with me because, you know, I'm first. And it could be just an anxiety response. Right? So we have a lot of myths built around this. So when you keep saying, oh, this is the most amazing student in my class, you already pushed, pushed this child up here and saying you have to always reach up to that. And if you don't, then you're somehow not, you're not making the cut, right? So that becomes the bigger uh, danger. So how do you self-soothe? So before I do that, I'll tell you how children deal with anxiety. How do they sort of uh, work with it? I mentioned earlier, control is one where, you know, I will zone out. I will just zone out completely and I maintain control because I've gone into this internal fantasy. In my internal fantasy, I'm making sure that I'm dealing with this anxiety very well. Right? So I have a problem with my teachers. So in my dream, I've already become the superhero who destroys teachers or something. So in my fantasy, I've dealt with the situation. But in real life, I've not yet connected to it. 
Okay. The second is the stonewalling person. So I have issues with the relationship with you, for example. So I stonewall you. If I don't deal with you, I don't have to have anxiety. So I stonewall you completely. Mm. Right. The next will be I get offended easily. You say anything and I get offended. And you know, parents will come for counseling and say, you know, Rumba sensitive. He's very sensitive. Mm. Right. And you know, it's usually like from anxiety. If you really look at it, you'll see that the child is anxious about the new situation. So the moment someone says something, I don't know how to deal with it. I you know, become offended easily. So these will be the control related um, ways in which children would deal with it. The next is the one that cages himself or herself in a situation. So they limit meeting people, avoid meeting people, maintain very few friends or have difficulties maintaining relationships. And you know, the most common thing I've seen, they'll surround themselves with low achievers because they'll feel the high achiever mm -hmm. there. You get what I'm saying? So these are the ones who have great potential, but will always you know, sort of like skim on the surface there so that, you know, amongst these people, I'm the best. Mm. So I don't have to like really overdo anything or, you know, step up and stuff. The next is the charmer, you know, the one who's always reliable, always punctual, always the people pleaser, you know, the one that has the perfect house and, you know, when guests come and all, they're like, oh, she was so good at it. You know, anxiety driven, right? We have to maintain a certain level of uh, things. So culturally also, this is built in. Mm. If you're a good housewife, for example, your house must be perfect. I'd rather have a house that's lived in and safe for mm -hmm. the child. Mm. Right? So the fourth, of course, is the clingy one. You know, the one that's always clingy. Amma, tell me, Amma, am I doing the right thing? Say good, say this. So that's the uh, pattern. So they would deal with it. In terms of self-soothing, Lakshana, uh, one is modeling Mm -hmm. Okay, but before I go into modeling it, uh, itself, I need to let you know as a parent, check is anxiety your go-to response? How do you deal with anxiety? So every time you feel anxious, do you go on social media and divert and distract yourself? Right? Every time you feel anxious, do you start uh, calling up people and speaking to them? Are you the clingy person? Every mm -hmm. time you become anxious, do you rearrange the whole house and try and make it perfect? So see what your response is because your child is looking and picking up those things. Right? The second thing that I would um, look at is when you're modeling for the child and you do lose control, take a time a little later, speak with your child. Say, you know, Amma got a little upset at this point, you know, and I was feeling a little scared. Let them know, normalize it. Mm. Let them know I was feeling scared, but you know, after some time I calmed down and now I'm feeling okay. Mm. okay? But more importantly, after the modeling aspect, I would definitely talk about lifestyle and biological. By this, what I mean is you need to ensure that children have enough sleep. Mm. Okay? 10 hours is what I would suggest. If you can get 12, even better for young children. Okay. Now, we are probably the most sleep deprived generation ever to have inhabited the planet. Mm -hmm. Everything in nature, you look at a tree, you look at an animal, they all have a self healing mechanism. Mm. The human brain also has it. Unfortunately, we have replaced that with a medical model saying that if you have this symptom, you take this drug and you stay in this high. Some people, and by this I'm not saying that people don't need drugs. There are people who have uh, conditions that require medication, but not everybody does. Mm -hmm. And not everybody needs it for the first time they feel anxious. Mm -hmm. A little bit of discomfort is always required for growth. Mm -hmm. Right? Otherwise, you're not going to perform. You're going to become so complacent. So this is where sleep is very important because there are glial cells in the brain that remove stress hormones. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And children have that na natural repair mechanism. Second, regular eating habits, very important. Because, you know, I need to know this is hunger. This sensation I'm feeling in my body is hunger. And it's different from anxiety. Mm. If I don't have regular habits, I'm going to mix up all these cues and think I'm anxious all the time. You get what I'm saying? Which is why the biological clock and routines are so important. By that, I'm not meaning some, meaning some regimental drama, you know, like three o'clock means three o'clock. No, it could be three, three, fifteen. But overall, you know, you sort of work around a very gentle sort of approach to the whole routine. Then very important, once the biological clock is set, the single most important thing, which is play, getting children to play. Because play is self-driven, number one. When it's self-driven and purposeless, children will figure out what to do, how to play with it. Now, let me tell you how children deal with anxiety. One of the commonest thing is, you know, going for vaccination to the doctor, which young children have repeatedly. 
they will come back home and play doctor doctor for a whole week okay they'll be the doctor they'll be the nurse they'll be this one they'll be that one basically they're trying to say okay this situation made me feel very uncomfortable mm. so i'm going to make sense of it mm. and they'll play it so many times and then at the end of it they'll be like okay this is a situation that will happen and this is how i deal with it okay teacher teacher Mm. so they'll see the teachers looking at the board whatever whatever so you know you'll see so children have reset mechanisms in play mm. play is purposeless right and the self it absorbs the whole self which means they become mindfully aware of it and for anxiety the treatment of choice is mindfulness mm. getting people to breathe getting people to become aware of sensations getting people to you know sort of let it go that's what we do as adults children know it in play so the moment you and we replaced all that play with nonsense gadgets and screens where you're shooting somebody as if you have a problem inside you mm-hmm. right it's always internal anxiety is something that's beautifully related if you're able to connect internally slow down take that pause and deal with the situation right breathing techniques work very well grounding techniques work very well there are several of these i'm not going into it because you know what happens also with vlogs and blogs and all when you say you can do this when people start doing it obsessively so i'm not going to give like a prescriptive but i'm just giving you a general uh, idea of the fact that yes this can be done but play is very important hands on play messy play is very good for anxiety mm-hmm. you know, and children play messy uh, uh, things like clay and paint and fing- finger paints and sand and all they beautiful regulators for anxiety Mm. and today you know we become very clean for everything we want to sanitize and everything and not making fun of anybody with the covid situation but i'm just saying that you know we've started you know wiping clean our entire house not letting our children to be a little messy i don't know when i was growing up our walls were all full of paint and uh, smearing and mud and everything and it was quite normal that's how we learned right mm. and after a certain age parents painted the wall and said see now you grown up you don't use the wall and we knew we had to use paper but there are spaces there are times in your life that you need to have larger spaces to express yourself and i would suggest that to parents mm-hmm. so yeah. i hope that sort of answers the question yes yes you did you did you did i feel beautifully covered it so well in this uh, short time i mean at least we have a lot of clarity to differentiate fear anxiety and um, how to identify that when children are going through it so that we can support them so uh, thank you so much aarti for your time and uh, we look forward for uh, 19th and um, waiting for it thank you so much